a very good morning to one and all we are super excited to start our first keynote session for day 2 of the international virtual summit on women frontiers in exponential technology 2021 mit center for future skills excellence mit fuse is celebrating the international women's day in an exclusive way we are fortunate today to have with us miss helen yu on behalf of the organizing team mit center for future skills excellence mit fuse we feel so proud and indeed in welcoming miss helen yu founder and ceo tigon advisory corp greater chicago thank you ma'am let thank me you. thank you. yes let me also welcome all the enthusiastic participants the international virtual summit has been witnessing the insightful deliberations and exchange of thoughts on blockchain technology cyber security ai and ml next generation digital identity and so on the growth thrives at the intersection of technology and humanity rather than waiting to see how the future evolves mit center for future skills excellence aims to promoting a future in which emerging technology are in service to humanity let's watch a small av for mit center for future skills excellence <laughs> Thank you now let us begin with today's exciting session with saraswati vandana let's pray for goddess saraswati may goddess saraswati bless us all with knowledge and wisdom higher education institutions often struggle or thrive in direct response to changes in socio economic aspects and ideas of what higher education should accomplish can depend on what the world demands of an educated and skilled workforce mit art design and technology university 
we have been mapping our resources best to adopt strategic approaches to emerging technologies organizational practices and digital learning environment mit center for future skills excellence has been established to create a strong community of smart and employable tech enthusiasts with super specialized expertise in ai and ml blockchain technology cyber security data science cloud computing robotic process automation internet of things erp and digital marketing so i can't wait any more to listen to global thought leader and a rare combination of intellect work ethic and compassion world's digital transformation leader miss helen yu on how to get cyber fit make plans not assumptions so let's get started with great insights on cyber vigilance cyber risk assessment and much more before that let me introduce miss helen let me start my <coughs> screen sharing Ms. Helen Yu firmly believes that growth thrives at the intersection of technology and humanity. As a technology leader, she has been recognized as the global top 20 thought leader in 10 categories, including digital transformation, AI, cloud computing, cyber security, IoT, and marketing. She is passionate about the voice of the customer to deliver game-changing digital transformation. As a customer success executive, she drives the profitable growth for the global players. Miss Yu leads a global team reimagining the customer experience as an unforgettable exchange. She can be described as a rare combination of intellect, work ethic and compassion often not found in the C-level executives. After watching many startup technologies founder rise and fall, she started Taijuan Advisory, a CXO as a service growth accelerator in 2017 to multiply growth opportunities for organizations. Customers include Cisco, Qualcomm, AT&T, IBM, Vodafone and others with focus areas on deep customer insights for a profound customer experience, go to market expansion, digital transformation strategy, cyber security strategy and influencer marketing. We are indeed honored to have Ms Helen Yu with us today. Thank you ma'am. Over to you. Thank you for the warm introduction. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. You may. <clears throat> yes, your screen is visible, ma'am. Um, you seeing the slideshow or you seeing presentation? Slide. Slide. Okay. Excellent. So life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all, says Stacy Williams. Let me take you to an a daring adventure with me today. So let me just take you. Think about street up. There is ice, thousands and thousands of feet of ice, like a fountain frozen in time. We are in Iceland. Climbing Iceland's largest ice cap and the largest global mass in Europe, Ventnagal, that co it covers eight percent of Iceland. Your lips are burnt from the rigid air. You can feel that your heart beat like a drum, like a drum pounding through your ears, over and over. A steady beat of fear, unlike anything you've ever known, runs through you. Think about it. One small mistake, one off moment. What are the consequences? The sheets of ice glimmer against the sun like diamonds floating in the air. We can actually eat glacier ice. It is refreshing after hours of climbing. Suddenly we stop. We feel the acceleration of growth. How can we not? With every step we climb our inner mountain, we feel brief. The outcome of our climb will be fantastic. We will change how we look at the world for the rest of our lives, because we know the real growth happens when we are free to create, free to solve problems, 
free to help others, free to innovate, free to climb higher and higher. Well, let me share with you my story. I was climbing Mount Nagal, Iceland's largest ice cap. As I ascended the mountain, I was thinking to myself that if my carabiner breaks, I'm never going to see loved ones again. If my axe isn't sharp enough, I'll never see another yellow orange sunshine. And if my, I, I panic, well, not only am I in trouble, but I will put the people behind me at risk too. For the first few hours, I experienced the splendor and wonder of nature, but then something unexpected happened. There is this thing called a crampon. It is a climbing iron, a small metal blade with spikes at the end. It attaches to your boot so that your feet can dig into the ice. Crampons are important because without, without them, you have no traction, no resistance. Without a crampon, you basically slip off the ice. While the crampon popped off the bottom of my shoe, what I remember the most was my scream. And the only reason I'm here talking to you today is because of my carabiner. Well, that might be the obvious and most technically correct answer. It is true my carabiner saved my life as I suspended in space on the side of a glacier. But what really saved my life was being prepared because to climb a massive block of ice, you need a lot more than just, you need a lot more than just the strength, just the, uh, the right gear, physical strength and hard skills. You need to approach the challenge with zero assumptions. At the same time, you must prepare in such a way that you don't hold yourself or your team back from making it to the top. You need to climb unencumbered, knowledgeable, and confident. You need to make plans, not assumptions. That leads to our discussion about how to get cyber fit for the 21st century enterprise. Make plans, not assumptions. Today, cybersecurity looks different and act different than we have ever seen before. We can no longer only play defense. Cybersecurity goes far beyond phishing and virus protection. Onboarding employees with cyber training is not enough anymore. The cost of making assumption is steep. Global cyber crime now tops almost $600 billion. A study by Pullman Institute says the average cost per breach for the typical company is $3.86 million. Accenture, meanwhile, found that 89% of the organizations do not have a cybersecurity function that meets their need. According to Ernst Young, only 36% of the companies are confident that their board and executive management team has a comprehensive understanding of information security to fully evaluate cyber risks. It is time to change. It is time to change up the cybersecurity playbook. We have to play our offense, not just our best defense, because if we only play defense, we will hold our companies back from achieving great things. Effective cybersecurity should give us the fuel for growth. It must free us to do our work, achieve our KPIs, allow us to collaborate, grow our companies, innovate, and inspire customer trust and loyalty, all while being keeping our data, our systems, our customers, and our employees safe. I've learned four lessons from my glacier ice climbing experience. The first lesson is assume nothing. Remember my crampon disaster in Iceland? I remember my guide telling me, 
crampons make it easy to climb the climb the ice without slipping. I never challenged the assumption. I never asked her what if it breaks. Expecting employees to stay cyber vigilant is like expecting crampons to stay in place while scaling a glacier's sharp contours. Both are naive assumptions. You must prepare for the worst, just as climbers must see the potential for danger in glaciers' beauty. CISO must see the threats in otherwise sublime landscapes where workforces are always on, always connected. The greatest threat to corporate cybersecurity is the blind face. In the context of cybersecurity, blind face is the expectation that your employees will follow security policies assiduously, that they will be consistently cyber vigilant by recognizing ransomware when they see it, identifying spear phishing when it happens, managing their passwords responsibly, operating sensibly on social media, or protecting sensitive information such as log logging credentials. That is dangerous assumption akin to climbers foregoing carabiners. Because after all, how could crampons possibly fail when scaling a glacier's jacked contours? Just how faulty is the assumption that employees will conduct themselves cyber vigilantly, vigilantly, vigilantly at all times? 90% of cyber attacks result from human error. Exceedingly high was the cyber attacks expected to cost more than $2 trillion in 2019 alone. Global cybersecurity spending is expected to exceed $6 trillion in 2021, according to Cybersecurity Venture. So what are companies spending all this money on? New technologies, employee training to upscale the workforce, some companies consider continuous authentication, for instance, post-authentication security technology developed to replace two-factor authentication when the later turned on susceptible to devious workarounds like SIM swapping or password reset process that bypass two-factor authentication. Continuous authentication can, uh, combines, combines um, continue monitoring of user activity with advanced biometrics, machine learning, and crowded crowd sourced data to produce a security system that vastly improves among, upon traditional login techniques. Our greatest risk is being naive about our potential risk. The consequences of making assumptions are grief stolen data, excessive downtime, hits to, to your reputation, permanent loss of data, service interruption, even the, the perception, perceptive people in political elections. The worst consequence, however, is loss of trust. Trust is hard to earn and easy to lose. When you lose trust from your team, customers, investors, board of directors, and all your brand believers, it may take years to regain your footing. The second lesson I learned is to be brutally honest when assessing the risk landscape. Why? Because new vulnerabilities in any in, in an always on, always connected world surface daily. As more employees acquire more mobile devices, use more variables, the risk to enterprise networks mount exponentially. In February 2017, Equifax, a credit reporting agency, underwent one of the worst cyber attacks in history. The credit report of 147 million people were, were hacked. Congress concluded it was preventable. Why? Equifax was warned there was they were warned that there were multiple unpatched 
and misconfigured systems. In fact, the company was first hacked via a consumer complaint web portal. Due to the failure in their internal process, it was never patched. Passwords were stored in plain text. Attackers stole selected data because Equifax had failed to renew an encryption certificate on one of their internal security tools. And to make things worse, they waited more than a month after the attack to publicize the breach. All of these facts resulted not only in a loss in data, but a loss in confidence. Managing your reputation begins and ends with minimal, minima, minimizing risk intelligently and honestly. So how do you assess risk? There are four steps you can take to better assess your risk. The first thing you can do is to honestly identify the risk around your team, processes, and all the systems that you have or endpoint security that you may have to look into. Secondly, you need to rec recognize the full breadth of the risk. It goes way beyond just the data. And thirdly, is to understand the consequences around the financial impact, the reputation, and your brand image. Lastly, is really need to create, you really need to create a playbook with an actionable plan to improve your organization resilience. The third lesson I learned from my ice climbing experience is that you need to strive to coach everyone in your organization to be cyber fit. But don't start with everyone. A cyber attack is a management issue that needs to address the managerial, organizational, and strategic aspect of cybersecurity. No company is impervious to cyber attack. The NSA, the CIA, the Pentagon have all been victims of hack attacks. So what does this tell us? It tells us that cybersecurity is not just a problem for your IT team. Think of your earlier adventure Climbing a glacier by yourself in, is in the, world, in the world foolish. You have to have the right people by your side, hire the right coach, and assemble the right team for cybersecurity, and know that everyone in the company is responsible for it. Most importantly, create cyber risk awareness across non-technical workforces. Like all great adventures, the first place to start when it comes to cyber risk governance is to be curious and ask a question, where do you start? Many experts will tell you, make cyber vigilance part of the culture. That is absolutely the goal, but it is also too um, ambitious to serve as a starting point or even the midpoint for that matter. That would be like calling scale at a at the starting point of a company. So how do you sensitizing companies to cyber vigilance? Start at three levels. First is a leadership level, CEO level. Second is a board level. Third is the individual level. So let's take a look. As a CEO, how do you get cyber fit? The CEO needs to be a leader of change. I worked with a company where their CEO has cyber minute each week to remind the entire company about the, the importance of cybersecurity. He also treats cybersecurity as a as fiduciary responsibility and business function and includes it in the board meeting agenda each quarter. So it creates an open environment for team to have direct line to him in the event of emergency is also critical. Also, you need as a CEO to set up a healthy cybersecurity controls, countermeasures, and programs to monitor the progress, ensure the entire executive team is cyber vigilant. So that's how, as a CEO, you can get cyber fit. Secondly, as a board, how do you get a cyber fit? First, they need to have someone assigned on the board to provide oversights to cyber risk. 
Secondly, the board should support the process of selecting a framework. NIST is one of the framework I will talk about uh, in, in future, in later slide. Thirdly, the board should take responsibility for identifying vulnerabilities. Lastly is employees, right? How would the employee get cyber fit? First is to understand who your IT administrators or protocols. So before I get on any adventure, I oftentimes check on the windows and doors in my house to make sure they're all locked before I head out for a trip. As an employee, we should do the same, right? We need to get into a habit of daily routines to make sure that we know what are the protocols and make sure that we are fully aware the cybersecurity priority, making sure we practice password best practices, we understand what a secure versus unsecure website is, make sure that we eliminate removable media, make sure we use secure Wi-Fi when we are uh, working remotely. The last lesson here I learned is practice, practice, and practice. Children go through the fire drills regularly in school. Why do they practice? To be prepared, to be confident they know what to do, where to go, and how to handle a fire. They dr dramatically reduce the risk. So if a real fire happens, they are safe and protected. Climbing a glacier mountain is very similar. One must go through the what ifs beforehand one must go entertain every scenario that might happen. For cybersecurity, one of the most profound measure you can make is to go through the motions before a breach occurs. I mentioned about NIST framework earlier on. One way to do this is to select the most effective framework for strengthening cybersecurity decision-making in your organization. So this is the National Institute of Standard in Technology. That's uh, the short, you know, AKA NIST framework is a law and requirement for essential services, critical infrastructures and gov government agencies. NIST framework encompass, encompasses five steps, identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. So identify, means that you, you, know, you need to identify your most important assets, systems, data, and people. On your mountain climbing, our most important assets is our life. Protect means you need to identify the activities and investment you must make to protect your assets. What's your approach measuring the risk? How are you sharing the information? Detect means you deploy the capabilities to detect attacks before they happen. What triggers should you be aware of? Respond obviously means how you build a practice and know your response plan. Recover is your commitment to business continuity with strong and vivid recovery plans. Commit to being cyber resilient. So I encourage you to explore, use NIST to raise critical questions about the risk prevention process. You should also measure, use that as a litmus test by which to measure your current strategy and map out a plan right, to guide for decision and investments. So please bear in mind, if you are in a highly regulated industry, you may have additional standard you have to apply to. If you're in a healthcare industry, HIPAA is one of the things you have to know. If you're in the financial industry, you need to know there's PII. So in addition to the standard uh, security framework, you need to have additional standard there. Someone once described climbing a glacier your idea of a fun day in the mountain is most people's worst nightmare. Oftentimes for CISO, cybersecurity can turn into a company's nightmare, but it does not have to be that way. You have the power to prepare for cybersecurity with the finesse and boldness of a glacier mountaineer. Make plans, not assumptions, and then climb, climb to the highest peak 
climb safely. Climb with confidence, because when you reach the top, your organization will have a bold story about how you grow, innovate, and protect people and information. Your success will be driven by a definitive plan, not a little plan, but a big plan of action for cybersecurity. So with that, I'm gonna leave for open up for questions. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for such an insightful address. So uh, let me ask you a few questions. How do you see world of technology and future of humanity? What is your take on this? Hey, Suraj, can you? Yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, I was asking you, how do you see world of technology and future of humanity? What is your take? Yeah, I believe growth thrives at the intersection of technology and humanity. Uh, because if you think about technology alone, won't really take us any far, far, right? If technology defeats the purpose, if it does not serve um, the, the good hu humanity of, does not really create a better world for people. I think technology is a path for freedom uh, to free us up to do what we're passionate about, to free us up to help others to solve the real problem. Uh, so that's where the you know, growth thrives. Great. So you have worked with IBM, Lenovo, Pipestream, and several Fortune 500 companies, right? What do these Fortune 500 companies look for in employees or future workforce? Well, um, from cybersecurity perspective, they look for people with all kinds of uh, skill sets, right? From there's, I, I look at things from process technology and people perspective from team perspective, they look at people who have a strategic vision to guide the team by right? making sure that they can provide not only the technical skills, but the business acumen who can really help turn the vision into execution plan, align the vision with execution plan. And then also there's uh, people with technical skills who can really help build the um, build a protected uh, workforce, making sure that, you know, the company's uh, systems and data and, and people are safe. Um, in addition to that, as always people that who can really train, right? When we talk about upskill the workforce and then they need people who are capable of enabling the workforce and the leaders, right? Leadership. And I think the leader does not necessarily have a, a have a, title, but then they are really um, can really represent the skill set that they can really take the leadership in setting up a great example for cyber uh, vigilant, being cyber vigilant. Okay. And uh, right, because of the new normal, uh, cybersecurity now dominates the priorities of every organization across the globe and they adopt this post-COVID-19 situation. So what would you like to suggest the startups, what they shall go for it? How, do you, how, do, how shall they pursue cyber security or uh, how they shall mitigate the cyber breach or attacks being in a startup space? Yeah, I work with uh, quite, a, quite a few startups what I learned that startup oftentimes is stretched thin, right? They don't have the budget, enough budget to pay attention to cybersecurity. But the reality is um, cybersecurity is as important for startups as it is important for any larger organization. Because as I mentioned earlier, once you, it's not about the loss of information or data, it is loss of trust. So, you know, I 
really encourage the startups also to invest in cybersecurity. As a matter of fact, um, uh, I, I have a book coming up about uh, Ascend Your Startup. So that's uh, where they can find, really learn more about what are things they can do um, to, what are things they can do to really uh, build out their business, right? There are, I describe five disconnects within the book um, about how they scale their business. Uh, they can learn about how the technology, one of the you know, five disconnect, the first one is product market fit disconnect. Second one is about define minimum repeatability disconnect. Third one is voice of customer. Fourth one is process disconnect. And last one is measurement disconnect. I talked about um, how important it is to uh, overcome them to accelerate growth. And in there, there's a detail about uh, how you can leverage technology and then how you build a culture, right? Making sure that uh, all connected to overcome these disconnect to accelerate growth. That's really an amazing news. And we are looking forward to have the copy with us of your new book. Many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So you have been heavily tapped for predictions and future proofing trending topics. So let me ask a few questions to you. How can technology augment the worker? How will this AI augmented or virtual reality, robotics, chatbots, and other technologies help human to create orders of magnitude improvements in productivity? So what is your prediction? Uh, my prediction is that technology can absolutely, uh, technology will really change the way we interact, right? We, we live. If you think about uh, today that um, we, we still have human doing a lot of heavily routine, right? Monday type of work. Uh, technology can help automate some of the work, but they will create new types of works. For example, you still need human to really um, automate, you know, help really monitor the ethics, right? When it comes to AI, you have to have a standard and policies and then making sure that whatever we create the technology, the algorithms is not, does not have the bias, right? You also wanna make sure that even today with manufacturing, even though we automate the workforce, there's still 2.4 million, um, people like shortage of the workforce in manufacturing. So um, there's article about we actually have 400 million or 800 up to 800 million uh, workforce shortage, meaning that we need to upskill the workforce, right? And shifting them, you know, really enable them to learn the emerging technology because, you know, in, right now if we write, we do anything, without the machine, then we have to learn how to interact with machine. My prediction is that we, there are gonna be more human and machine interaction uh, regardless of the field, right? Even though automation happens, but then automation is not gonna fully replace the human job. It's gonna just shift the job from what we do today to other job. There's still gonna be creative thinking type of work and you still need human to really build the algorithm, leverage algorithms to build the automation. So uh, I predict there are tons of opportunities out there, just different types of opportunities. Thank you. And uh, we are really amazed to see that <clears throat> you work on multiple domains. You are a real global influencer in multiple areas. Can you just let us know about digital transformation and your obsession? with CXOs and growth hackers? Yeah, when it comes to digital transformation, there are three things to think about, right? So number one is the culture. You got to have a culture of sharing and uh, making sure that the entire organization from the board to the CEO, creating a culture of sharing and then people, because what really, the, the change management aspect of that is really 80% of the whole journey of digital transformation. And then secondly is the need to upscale your workforce. And you know, there's not enough of people who understand the digital transformation 
end to end. So in order to make that effective, you got to make sure you upscale the entire workforce. And then number three is to align your strategy with your day-to-day -day practice, right? I uh, oftentimes um, find companies that they all have the grand vision there, right, at the top. But if you don't really have aligned that grand vision with your day-to-day -day execution, your digital transformation will, will not be as successful as it should be. So the last thing I would say, invest in technology right, in addition to your team. Uh, and then I think that would be, I also say that you should not just go invest technology without knowing or without well-defined, you know, where you, you know, understanding of where you are at today and also understand where you want to be and then map out the, the uh, you know, how you get from where you are at to today to where you want to be before you just go implement the technology. Wow. Great. Great to hear that. And with this new normal situation, how do you envision our society with technology and social impact? How do you see that what is going to be, what is going to happen? I think the new normal uh, brings people together closer, right? You know, like I, and in the past, I always to fly around, I used to travel around the globe to speak and I can only do this, um, you know, I, I was in Switzerland to give a keynote speech, but I can only do that uh, one speech uh, in the day, right? Like with today's, you know, the change of technology, I can give a speech to um, the folks in Canada in the morning, but then in, at night I can speak to you, you know, so I can really give three, three speeches in a day without traveling. So technology has definitely evolved, right? The way we live and the, the way we share information with each other. And it also brought us closer to each other. I mean, with uh, the you know, ongoing pandemic, everyone is remote. We suddenly, all are on an equal ground, right? We can talk to each other regardless of where we are, we are from. So that location uh, advantage has gone, right? Uh, and then, you know, we also, you know, people are more active on social media and then information can be shared much faster. That also presents a challenge for brands or organization. They have to be very careful about uh, what they say, what they do, right? So they're what brand they represent. Uh, so that social impact is a lot greater for a brand than the old days because people pay more attention to what they say. And then people do business with companies who have shared value with them. So it's much more important, right? You look at the value of the company, it's not no longer just measured based on a revenue anymore. There's also that brand value, right? It's what they believe in, the social impact they make. So all those are right, become more apparent these days than before. Yes, thank you. I personally really like the three piece of advice which you have given regarding digital transformation, culture, talent, and practice. And we hope that everyone would follow this for their betterment. So uh, let me ask last question to you before we call it for a session. What one piece of advice would you like to give this Generation Z, which lives life more pragmatically? Yeah, so I know you're gonna ask that question. <laughs> I, I kept two things here. One is because today is International Women's Day, right? I want to tell everybody, we are product of our decisions, not product of our circumstances. Meaning that sometimes you're gonna run into obstacles, right? Don't let that define you, you define yourself, right? Your decision defines you. So with that, I'm gonna just raise the glass, right? Give a toast to all the women around the world and cheers here. Um, I also want to leave a cybersecurity quote to all of you, right? I wrote a blog the other day, and this is one of the quotes from my blog. So feel free to, to find me on Twitter. I, you can see me on Twitter every, every day. If you go there, check on that, you'll see my post and you can chat with me. Uh, or, you know, you can find me on LinkedIn. 
Uh, I look forward to staying connected with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Uh, there is one question from our own internal team member from Pratiba, ma'am. How did you become an expert in such a wide area and topics which you always love to take? Well, I would say it's a curiosity and, uh, and learning agility, right? I always want to do learn new things. Uh, if you look at my career path, there's no, it's not, it's unconventional. I started my career as financial analyst, accountant, learned how to code, right, and uh, became a consultant. Then later on, uh, I did, you know, be, became a solution architect at Oracle and then did the sales and then customer success. So always get on new things. Every year I pick two to three things to learn. This year was writing a book, publishing a book, right? So that's what I do. Every year I keep myself on at least two things. Once I master those two things, I move on, I pick another new thing or two and then master them. So if you constantly do that, even though you pick one new thing each year, you can always learn, right? Always learn and talk to people, read and listen and learn. So that's how I get myself um, to where I'm at today. Great. So uh, let's have a group photograph virtual group photograph. I request yeah. all the participants to switch on their video. Uh, Helen, uh, you have to stop screen sharing so that we could see. Oh, sure. Hold on. Let me do. Yeah. Please switch on your cameras quickly. Be quick so that we can have group photograph. Please give a big smile. Thank you. Thank you so much. So before we call it for a session, let me once again thank Helen ma'am for providing valuable insights to us today. And really we got great insights how to become cyber fit and how we can definitely think of and those who are working professionals and students they have understood how to get started their journey in cyber security domain and what are the various numerous opportunities available to them and thank you so much because we are coordinating different time zones <laughs> thank you ma'am thank you once again and pleasure to connect thank with. you for having Thank you so much, yeah, Take care. Bye. Yeah. Your voice is not audible, ma'am. Hello. Okay, I think there is some network glitch. So once again, let me thank all the participants for joining us today. So I request all of you to join once again for our next session. Before that, let me play video testimony by Professor Dr. Mangesh Karat, sir, for International Virtual Summit on Women Frontiers in Exponential Technology. Good morning. Friends, I am really delighted to welcome you to this virtual platform of the MIT Art Design Technology University, Pune, a very famous university, new generation university, which is working uh, in technology, management, art, and design area. Today, we have organized, you know, International Virtual Summit on uh, exponential technologies by the Women Frontiers. I am really happy to share that today is a uh, is a International Women's Day, and on this occasion, 
we have organized this uh, this summit on a very appropriate topic of the exponential technologies and the role of women in that. Friends, today being the International Women's Day, I extend my warm greetings to all the women who are really striving hard to shape up the society by working in a different uh, walks of life. They are, really, they are really striving hard to shape up the family, to shape up the society, and to shape up the country. And this is a day to remember their contribution and to appreciate them and to promote them to the next level. So MIT Art Design Technology University Pune has taken this step. You know, the today's speakers, eight speakers are there, and they are very renowned speakers. Dr. Bina Ramamurthy is there. There are a number of other speakers are there. They are going to talk about the all the exponential technologies, use of exponential technologies, and how they can help your company to grow, how they can help you to grow in the in your professional life. So this is a very appropriate. I think uh, appropriate topic of the webinar. MIT has realized, our university has realized the importance of these exponential technologies. And to propagate the use of the exponential technologies, MIT ADT University has uh, specially established one, you know, one vertical, one institution called, we call it as the MIT Fuse, Future, Center for Skills Excellence, and that you know MIT Fuse is going to deliver the courses in all upcoming areas, uh, you know, including all these exponential technologies for our youth of the country and youth of the globe. So this is a very appropriate topic, and I am I am very confident that all the eight speakers who are very renowned, renowned speaker of the world, they are, uh, they will when they will talk in the two-day seminar. Their, you know, their insights given, the knowledge and the enlightenment given by them will certainly help our, all our student community, all our faculty and the you know, audience to the larger extent. So I am really privileged to welcome all the speakers, uh, renowned speakers, audience for this uh, International Virtual Summit, uh, Women Frontiers in Exponential Technologies. So thank you. Thank you very much. Participants are requested to provide their valuable feedback on the link. I am also testing the link in chat box for everyone's benefit. And please join us at 11.30 a.m. for the next session on Accelerating Digital Transformation by Ms. Saloni Vijay, General Manager and Cluster IT Head Vodafone Idea Limited. Thank you all of you once again. Wishing you a great day ahead. Thank you.